In this video, I'm going to walk you through the steps of creating a time series data request from DataStream accessed through Refinitive Icon. This is only possible on Windows devices as DataStream through Icon is not supported on Macs. To start, you will need to open Excel and select the Refinitive Icon DataStream tab. If this tab is not visible, please watch our Icon Essentials Accessing DataStream with Excel video. On the DataStream tab, we're going to make a time series request on price data for multiple companies for a substantial period. This is possible because DataStream does not have restrictive data download limits, making it an excellent resource for accessing large quantities of data. Although we're focusing on equities and price data here, there are many other asset classes and data sources, such as WorldScope and IBES, that are available through the same process. Click the Time Series Request option on the far left to open a wizard that generates a query. The top field, labeled Series List, allows you to choose the series you want to get data on. The second field, labeled Data Types Expressions, allows you to define the data types you want to extract. The middle section allows you to select the periodicity of the data, while the final options are other customizations. We're going to start by selecting the field we want to get data on. Click the Find Series button to the right of the Series List field to bring up the navigator. When this opens, don't be alarmed if this screen looks different from this example. The product remembers what the last person searched for and will default to that view. To start fresh, simply click the Clear All option at the top left side. Once the defaults are cleared, select the Choose a Single Category link to open your category options. I'm going to search for equities, but you can use this to select other asset classes such as bond indices or commodities. By selecting equities, I open a list of companies. Each page contains 15 companies companies, with the first page showing the largest companies by market cap. If you want to select one company, you can click on the ticker symbol, which automatically adds it to the search wizard. However, I want to select multiple well-known tech companies. Because I want to search a range of companies, I'm going to use the checkbox to select companies, Apple, Microsoft, and Alphabet. As I select companies, they are added to the My Selections field in the top right, which displays the number of items I've selected. Rather Rather than scrolling through pages of company names, if you want to find a specific company, you can search for it using the search bar. For example, if you want to add IBM, type that into the search bar and click the search button. If you want to, you can select all the listed items on a page by clicking the check mark box next to Use. This will select all the options on the page. Although this defaults to 15 items per page, you can use the Show All command to open all the options that fit your search criteria. This is only possible if the number of search results is small enough. If it is too large, you will need to page through one one by one. From this list, I only want IBM. Once you've selected the options you want, open the My Selections. You will see that all the items you've selected appear. In the lower right corner of the drop-down box, you will see a Return All Selections link. Click the link to add the appropriate codes to the wizard. Next, choose the data types you want by selecting the Data Types button. This opens a similar menu, but instead of selecting companies, it displays data options. The wizard knows that I've selected equities for the first option, so it will default to equities-related data points in this menu. The initial menu displays the most used data points, but if the data type you want isn't listed, you can search for it. To look at different price points, search for price and pull up all the price data point options. I'm going to select ask price, bid price, intraday high, and intraday low. To find data points from a specific source, you can also search for the source name by type in IBES. It will bring up the data points that are found in that source. Again, you can see that as items are selected, they are added to my selection. To add these selections to the wizard, click the Return All Selections link. Once you've added the data types, you can specify a time period using the date fields. You can choose a specific date range by typing in the dates manually or by using the drop-down menu. For example, instead of seeing the last two years, as indicated by the minus 2y, you can see the last 20 years by typing in minus 20y.
To change the periodicity, select the Frequency drop-down menu. If you want a broader overview, you could select Yearly. However, because there aren't any data download restrictions, I'm going to stick with Daily. Finally, you can customize how the data will appear in the spreadsheet by using the Options menu at the bottom of the wizard. If you prefer to see data in rows rather than columns, select the Transpose Data option. Once you've made your selections, click Submit. Data Stream will interrogate the database to pull out the requested information. At this point, the speed of your internet connection will make a big difference in how long the data download takes. If you need a large amount of data, you may want to consider ways to break that data up into segments so that you don't overwhelm your Wi-Fi connection. You can break it down by smaller periods of time, for example. Once DataStream has completed the process, you end up with a clear chart of data. If you are interested in what the code looks like for the request, click on the field with the small red triangle. Here you can view the code in case you want to adapt it in some way. For example, if I wanted to look at Amazon instead of Alphabet, I could replace Google's ticker with Amazon's ticker instead. DataStream will then automatically update the spreadsheet. Thank you for watching. Further support is available via the Help menu on the DataStream tab or by speaking to one of the library team.